morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to worship here at the Mobile United Methodist Church. My prayer today that you will be blessed when you leave from this place, that you will feel the love and grace and peace of Christ. Open your hearts for God's spirit is here working. Will you send his love today? His comfort today. I want to call your attention so, to some announcement. Um, please follow along. Uh, first, I appreciate your prayer. Thank you for your support. Pray, continue to pray for me as I finalized my trip for Africa. Um, we have birthday celebration. All those who are celebrating birthday, we wish you happy birthday. And we also, as a nation, this week we remember 9-11. And so, um, before our survey, we'll have some reading and time of pause. And also, we're having a soup pie coming up on the 13th and our council meeting. Any other announcement we need to make? Okay, go ahead. The Woodbury Central Quarterback Club is selling some salt. So, you know, football boys will deliver it to you if anybody's interested. Okay. Any other announcement? Okay, please stand for, for this reading, and following that, we will have our call, uh, uh, call to worship as we pause to remember 9 11. The following is a reading from Chuck Grassley, some thoughts on the 23rd anniversary of the tragedy of 9-11. After 23 years, the unprecedented terrorist attacks on U.S. soil serve as a solemn reminder to all Americans. We must never forget the tragic loss of approximately 3,000 people who woke up and went about their daily lives on that sunny September morning, never to see their loved ones again. Thousands more have passed in the years since from cancer and other illnesses brought on by the toxins generated in the attacks on the World Trade Center and Pentagon. On 9-11, observed as Patriot Day and National Day of Service and Remembrance, let's keep in mind how Americans throughout history pull together in unity, finding strength and resilience no matter what comes our way. Remember the bravery of the first responders on 9-11 who rushed into deadly infernos. The heroes above aboard United Flight 93 who prevented their hijacked plane from reaching its target. And the efforts by all those involved in the aftermath to search, rescue, recover, and rebuild. Give thanks to the men and women who have answered the call to serve our country in uniform, to fight terrorism, and defend freedom around the world. Honor the lives lost and the burden shouldered by survivors and loved ones left behind. Let us close for a prayer. Father, we remember as a nation and we seek your continued protection and peace and comfort and unity for our nation. Guide us to follow your good will. Be with our leaders of military far and near and remember the family. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Now I invite you for our call to worship as we sing our praises to the Lord. Please follow along. Sing to the Lord a new song, a song of hope and rejoicing. Praise God for his mighty work and kindness. God has remembered God's faithful ones. God has poured blessing upon blessing upon us. Praise the Lord, all the earth. Shout your praise. Rejoice for God's worship with us. Let us sing together to God be the glory. See, so long. 
of he he gave of his son oh yeah to me for sin and open the Open our time in a unison prayer. Good, Good and gracious God, God thank, thank you for, for the blessing of this day and your incredible power at work in our lives. For your, your spirit, spirit upon us to have, to have a a awareness of your presence. presence. Fill our hearts with your self giving love so that our voices may speak your praise. Strengthen us with your word so that we may be witnesses to your mercy. We love you and we need you this day and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Listen to the word of the Lord from Isaiah 41. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 41, verses 10 through 14. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. All who rage against you will surely be ashamed and disgraced. Those who oppose you will be as nothing and perish. Though you search for your enemies, you will not find them. Those who wage war against you will be as nothing at all. For I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. Do not be afraid, you worm Jacob. Little Israel, do not fear, for I myself will help you, declares the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. May God bless the reading hearing of his holy word. Our young disciples down, who don't have much case here today, okay. Good morning. Oh, your, I like your dress, it's very pretty. Mm -hmm. How you guys doing? Good. Okay, how was school? Good. Good, okay. Okay, let me ask you, have you ever been afraid before? 
Yeah. Yeah. Afraid of what? The dark. She afraid of the dark. I think we all can see that, you know. What else? Spiders. Spiders. Some people are afraid of spiders, you know. <laughs> Snakes and everything. In this life, we are all afraid of something, you know. And sometimes, what is the spider or the dark? One day, I was afraid of the dark, and I was sleeping, and I woke up, I yelled in my sleep. I woke up, and I called my brother. I said, come, come. It's too dark in this room. Come and sleep with me. So something is in this room. You see, in life, you can be afraid, and sometimes you don't know what to do, you know? Or you call for help, or mom, or your dad, you know? Sometimes you're in your room and you say, oh, uh, you, you're afraid to sleep in your room, you want to go to mommy and daddy's room, because you feel afraid. The assurance today for us is in the Bible. God said, I am with you. Do not be afraid. I will strengthen you. I will help you. So everywhere we go, you know, that is the assurance that God said, I am with you. Uh, if you are weak or if you are afraid, God say, my peace is with you. I care for you. When you, you feel sad, God said, I, I'm there for you to love you, to be with you. When you feel like no one care for you or your friend let you down, God said, I will be your best friend. So I want you to believe that you have Jesus who is there for you. Always. He said he would never leave us. So everything we have that comes to us that we feel afraid, the first thing we need to do is to do this. Pray, okay? Pray that God will give us peace and help us. So let us pray. Dear God, Dear God, we thank you, we thank you that you are with us. When we are afraid, may your peace be with us. Strengthen us. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, we will present our tithe and offering. Uh, let me say thanks to all of my church family for your for support for my mission trip uh, and, and for your prayer as I found last things. And, and I will say more about my mother, but please stand for the doxology. Sing flow. God, as you are giving us out of your abundance, we return offering to you with praise and thanksgiving. We pray the Spirit always prompt us to give cheerfully and generously. It is a privilege to make a difference in the church and the world by offering our time service. We give thanks in the name of Savior, we pray. Amen. Please be seated. 
At this time, it's time for joys and concerns. Um, so I invite you, church family, with your concerns. And on behalf of the church, we'll continue to pray for those who are uh, dealing with a loss, who remember Kirk and Tam. May God comfort you continually in the homegoing of your sister, Sandra, and you're in our prayers. Any joys and concerns? Okay, Harold. Are you are back <laughs> safely. Thank God. Uh, huh? I want to thank Susan for the beautiful Thanksgiving decorations that are there. Just beautiful. beautiful. It's coming. Thanksgiving is coming so you can prepare yourself. Um, thank you, Susan. God bless you. Joe Adler and Kathy Peterson helped. Okay. Kathy Peterson, Joe Adler. God bless you. Uh, thank you for your prayer for my mom. Continue to pray for her. She's in the hospital. Um, the tube, she had the tube in her, you know, intubated. And by the grace of God, they have moved the tube. And so she's getting strength. But she want to talk. She's trying to talk, but uh, she, she's so, her throat is so, so. It will take some time, but I uh, just pray for our family. My brother came from Des Moines and, and my parents. Pray for my dad. He was very emotional, and me myself, when he saw her. Just pray that God will continue to help her day by day to be strengthened. And pray for travel mercy for me as I'm torn between my going to Africa and the health of my mom, that God will help our family and, and God will take control. But God is able. I believe that. And thank you for your support. Any other prayer, joys, and concerns? Again, continue to pray for our nation, um, for our world, for the burdens and direction of this nation that God will continue to protect and guide and pray for peaceful election. Okay. <laughs> well, that's your team there. I'm good. <laughs> we celebrate that. As we prepare for prayer, let us sing this song. Lord, listen to your children praying. We'll sing it twice. children praying Lord bearing this flame listen to your children praying send us love send us bound send us grace Listen to all your children praying. pray. Our Father in heaven, we pray 
for your mercy upon us today. We praise your name, your glorious name, your holy name, your majestic name. We thank you for all you have done and continue to do in our lives because of your grace. Your words to let everything that have breath praise your name. So we praise you. And we say, Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us your love, your power, and your grace to be strengthened, to be a disciple of Jesus Christ and live our life worthy of your calling. Father, thank you for your many blessings upon us. Bless our church family for each person yet today and their family. And for those who are not with us, that your grace and peace will be with them. We pray for your comforting love to continue to be with Kirk and, and Tammy and the rest of the family in this reflection of grief and how much the love of Sandra and pray for your peace in their hearts. Be with his mom, Norma, and the rest of the family. Give them grace in this time of loss. We remember those in the hospital, O oh God, that your mercy will touch them, give strength to them. I remember, O oh God, that your grace has been with my mom, Sarah. Help her in the ICU. Continue to strengthen her, O oh God. Surround her with your healing grace. Thank you for answering our prayer that she continue to improve. We pray for others who have had surgery, for others who are recovering, others who are expecting their baby, oh God. Bless, bless the nurses and the doctor, oh God, for the healing ministry they are called to. Thank you for our nation, oh God. We pray for your continuance grace upon our nation and may you bless United States and continue to guide our leaders who remember the, and we remember the family of 9-11 all those who give their life diff different ways to sacrifice and give peace in the hearts and the memories and pray for New York as they prepare to have some service may you give peace in New York City and other part of our country. Pray for our military fire near that your protection will be with them and the family. We pray for peace in this world, oh God, peace in Gaza and Israel, and peace in Ukraine. Have mercy, yet our prayer, oh God. We remember those who are homeless today. We remember those who don't have no food today, oh God. We remember those who are feeling lonely, those who are in need of encouragement. May you give me traveling mercy, oh God, as I prepare to go to Africa. Protect me. My life is in your hands, oh God. All our life is in your hands. You are the God who is with us and for us. Thank you for answering prayer for different ways people have traveled for the summer and now some are back and thank you for your blessing upon Harold that he went to east and you brought him safely we give you thanks and for others who are back from vacation blessings upon them and thank you for each person in this church for their gifts and graces and the way we work together for your glory help us to continue to share your love to others in this community we thank you. We thank you for all those who are celebrating birthday and anniversary. And for all those who serve with hospitality in this church. And we pray for the women program this week that you will bless the program and, and just that we'll have a wonderful time. This is our prayer, O oh God, with thanksgiving in our hearts for all you have done and continue to be faithful to us. And we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as it is in heaven.
given us the power and to assurance to say, I am with you to the end of this age. Have you ever had, been with, a, for you grandparents, have you ever been with your kids and, and they, they come to a point, they are maybe playing in the park and they say, come, come, I want to be with you. Or come, they, they hold your hands and you are walking with them. And you feel a sense of security, they feel a sense of comfort. And that is the same sense Paul is saying that God is with his people. And Isaiah is saying that God will strengthen his people in weakness. So do not be afraid, for your God is able. Your God is able to do more than you can ever imagine. What a great truth it is. I think about the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they were in the fire furnace, and they, and they spoke to the God who is able and, and, and challenged the, the leader and said, our God is able to deliver us. You see, and they, they saw the faithfulness of God, that God protected them in the fire furnace. I, I remember David and Goliath, when, when, when David came before, before Goliath, Goliath came in his power and strength, and David said, you, you, you come, with, come to me with, with soul and everything. I come to you in the name of our Lord who will deliver you, for God is able. And, and we look at this New Testament, Jesus Christ, all his work, and, and people came to Jesus and show mercy, and he showed mercy to people that needed compassion. He healed them and showed his mercy because why? God is able. And, and when it was sad for the disciples, they, they thought God had forsaken his promises that Jesus was perhaps not the Messiah. And when that last day came, he was crucified and died. But the third day came, God is able, he showed his power, and he, he, he rose from the dead and showed that he is, has the power, that nothing in your life he cannot uh, hear your prayer about, that nothing that he does not concern about. Our God is able, so Paul said, don't forget that there is a great truth. So none to him who is able to do more than we can ever ask or imagine. According to the power that works within us. Thank God we have a power. It's not the power of the presidency. It's not the power of the great leader in the world. It's not the power of, of, of politicians. It is the power of God that is alive by the Spirit of God. So I pray today that, oh God, out of your glory riches, send your power, send your spirit, send your love. That's my prayer today. That God love and power flow through us and give a comfort and peace that in all our weaknesses in all our trouble that God is faithful to take care of us. Amen? Amen. Our God is able our God is able to do more. Do you believe that today? That God is able that nothing in your life he does not care about, concerned about. Every detail he knows about it and he's inviting us to Day, to believe this truth that he is able that we are not able that we are weak and he is our strength when we cannot find our way he is the way maker when we feel hopeless he is our hope when we feel overwhelmed and grieving he is our prince of peace to give us comfort because our God is able. And so Paul says, never forget this is true. Our God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all. We ask all things according to the power that works within us. To him be the glory through all generation forever and ever. Amen. It is important for Paul to close that doxology with Amen. It's the in agreement. You are believing and you're agreeing that we have a great God that is able. And no wonder we sing this song today. To God be the glory, great things He has done, and great things He will do in your life and in my life. For Jesus Christ is able. And so I say, Jesus.
Jesus Christ, Son of God, you are more than enough, more than enough for me, oh, Jesus Christ, Son of God, you are more than enough, more than enough for me, oh, Jesus is enough for you. He is more than able to do all you can ask or think. Will you surrender to him today? Will you trust him today? That God indeed will take care of you by faith and grace. Thanks be to God. Father, we thank you that you are able. We can trust you that you are able to do more. Thank you. May your word bear fruits in our lives for your honor and your glory. Let the people of God say amen. 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 Please stand. Let us believe this true and sing this song knowing that our God is able. God will take care of you. for your time. May God bless you. May he keep you. Now unto him who is able to do more than we can ever imagine or ask according to the power that works within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. God's people say, Amen. Peace be with you.
bless you.